Today we're looking at tricks to cut your car insurance costs. We'll also look briefly at how car insurance even became a thing and how it's evolved over the years. So hop in and let's get going. When you're paying your premium, you might have that thought that maybe you can get by without car insurance. But when an accident happens, boy, are you glad you have it. So how can you protect yourself while minimizing your costs? One way to lower your car insurance premium is through discounts. For example, there's a multiple car discount. In general, if you have multiple cars and multiple drivers who are related by blood or by marriage and are living in the same residence, then you qualify for a multiple car discount. Let's say you're newly married. You and your spouse each have a car, but under separate company. But you might be able to lower your collective car insurance if you insure both cars under the same company as a married couple. Or let's say you have a teenage son. In that case, most likely you're already paying a bit more because premiums are generally higher for teens. But if your son's school grades are B or above, or he ranks in the top 20% of his class, then you should ask your insurance provider if they offer a good student discount. Many providers offer this for teens and young adults until they turn 25 years old. Companies reason that high schoolers and college students who are responsible are most likely to be responsible drivers and less likely to need an insurance claim. The discount can range anywhere between 1% up to even 39%, depending on the company. You'll need to provide some proof of eligibility. It all depends on the insurer, but typically it's an official school transcript or report card, or maybe SAT scores showing they're in the top 20% of the national average. On a similar note, did you know that your credit rating impacts your car insurance rate? Many folks are actually surprised to learn this. But the reasoning is similar to that behind the good student discount. Statistics show that a person with an excellent credit rating is usually someone who is responsible and mature in their personal life and less likely to file an insurance claim. In other words, it means less risk for the insurance company. In fact, if your credit rating is poor, you may be paying 50% or more on your car insurance premium. So you might want to see how you can improve your credit rating to good or excellent. It'll take time to build up your credit, but it's worth it because it'll help you in other aspects of your life too. Another way to cut your car insurance costs is by qualifying for a multi-line discount. For example, you probably already have a homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance. So if you can get your car insurance and your homeowner's or renter's insurance to the same company, you'll see greater savings. For example, Allstate offers up to a 10% car insurance discount and 25% homeowner's discount if you bundle them together under their company. Did you know that you can lower your car insurance premium by paying more attention on the road? Literally, most people know that traffic violations and accidents count against you and can raise your premium. But what many don't know is if you're an alert, defensive driver, this means less traffic violations and accidents on your record, which means you qualify for a good driver or safe driver discount. It can range between 10 to 23% depending on your driving history and record. Consider it a reward for safe driving. Also, did you know that the annual mileage you put on your car impacts your insurance premium? In general, it's good to ask your insurer how many miles they currently have you on record as driving. That's because they estimate this information, and if it's wrong by a large margin, that means you're paying more than you should. So it's good to check it and get that corrected if needed. Also, if you commute as you're driving two to three hours every day, your premium will be much higher than someone who commutes to work near their house. One way to reduce your premium is to ask your insurer about their mileage threshold. If the savings are significant and you're able to reduce your mileage by taking public transportation or the office van pool part of the time, that might be worth considering. So you may love your vehicle, but did you know that the type of car you have impacts your premium? Let's say you bought your large dream SUV. Unfortunately, insuring a 5,000 pound high-end car is more expensive than insuring a smaller, safer, less expensive commuter car. Also, if this commuter car is a hybrid or alternative fuel car, you can qualify for further discounts. So if you really need to cut your insurance premium and fuel costs, then consider downsizing to a hybrid commuter car, for example. Or if you're shopping for a car right now, then evaluate insurance costs before or you buy. The year, make, and model has a big impact on your insurance rate. So it's worth getting the insurance estimate because it can help influence which car you choose from your shortlist. But let's say you have an older car. Well, you might want to consider nixing collision or comprehensive coverage. The reason is you might be paying more than your car is worth. And then if it gets totaled, you don't get much money back anyway. The general rule of thumb is to add your collision and comprehensive premium costs. Then multiply it by 10. Compare that value with how much your old car is worth right now. If your car is worth less than that value, it might not be beneficial to get collision or comp. That's because the average policyholder makes an insurance claim just once every 11 years and reports a total loss once every 50 years. 
Another way to cut your insurance costs is to look at your deductible. The higher the deductible, the lower the premium. If you're the kind of person who likely won't file smaller claims anyway because, let's say, you don't want to risk pushing up your premium, for example, then it might make sense to raise the deductible on your policy and enjoy a lower premium. Going from a $250 deductible to $1,000 can mean saving between 25 and 40% on your policy. Then you can set aside those savings to use as your deductible and cover your costs in the event of an accident. If you already have homeowners or renters insurance, you already know that you can get discounts if you have certain anti-theft devices installed. Well, it's a similar thing when it comes to cars. Depending on the insurer, you might be able to get up to 25% off if you have an anti-theft system in your car. Each insurer has their own requirements on car alarms and low jacks. So you'll want to ask first before you get it installed. Some insurers also offer discounts on safety devices like motorized seat belts. Believe it or not, the neighborhood you live in impacts your insurance rate. That's because insurers go by the statistics in your local area. This includes type and frequency of crime like car theft and vandalism, demographics of people, and even the type of cars in your locale. The algorithm analyzes all those data points to calculate the dollar risk and probability of car theft, car accidents, and so forth. Of course, most people won't be able to move to another area just to reduce their car insurance. But if you're already planning to move, it's something to consider. For example, urban neighborhoods have higher rates of accidents and stuffs and vandalism in rural areas and therefore higher car insurance premiums. So maybe it's time to head for the hills. Also, it is good to ask your insurer if they offer any other less commonly known discounts. You might be surprised. For example, some insurers offer special discounts for military personnel, veterans, senior citizens, teachers, employees of certain companies, and so forth. It never hurts to ask. The worst answer you can get is that there are none. Another tip is to always keep your car insurance active. If you even have the briefest lapse in coverage, it can increase your premium. Also, paying your full premium up front is generally cheaper than paying monthly, which can be higher and can come with an administration. Then there's a thing called black box car insurance. It's a newer user-based type of insurance. Basically, you put a tracking device on your car, which records your driving behavior and mileage. The insurer then tailors the premium based on how safe you drive and how much you drive. Big Brother is watching you. So if you're a safe, low mileage driver, this might give you a reduction in your premium. But if you're not as safe as you want to believe you are, it could work against you and lead to a higher premium. Let's talk briefly about how car insurance was even conceived. Would it surprise you to learn that Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers of the U.S., was one of the forefathers of insurance in the U.S.? That's right, the man who invented bifocals, experimented with electricity, and designed the lightning rod. Well, of course, cars went around back in his day, but in 1751, Benjamin had another bright idea. He formed the Philadelphia Contributorship, who was the first company in the colonies to offer fire insurance. In the first year, the organization issued 143 fire insurance insurance policies that lasted for seven years. Well, not one of those insured properties caught fire during that time, but it did blaze the way for the insurance industry of America, and it made a lot of money for old Ben. But it wasn't until 1897 in Dayton, Ohio, that the U.S. saw its first automotive insurance policy. It was issued by the Travelers Insurance Company to Gilbert J. Loomis for a hundred bucks. It protected him if his car killed or injured someone or damaged their property. By today's standard, the insurance plan was very basic. Pretty much, it is the earliest form of car liability insurance. In those days, car insurance was optional and rare. Safe driving wasn't something people cared about. In fact, anyone could operate a car, even if they had no idea what they were doing. It wasn't until 1903 that Massachusetts and Missouri became the first states to require drivers to have a driver's license. By 1930, 24 states required drivers to have a license, yet only 15 of those licenses required a driving exam. It wasn't until 1959 that all states required drivers to be licensed and tested. The car insurance industry took much longer to become mainstream. Massachusetts was forward thinking. In 1927, it became the first state to require drivers to carry car liability insurance. But believe it or not, for 30 years until 1957, Massachusetts remained the only state to legally require drivers to have car insurance. Today, only two states don't require car insurance, and that's Virginia and New Hampshire. The latter isn't surprised. Go figure, since it is the live, free, or die state. Anyway, there's an organization called the National Association of Insured Commissioners. According to their statistics, car insurance premiums have been rising in the double digits up to 30% in recent years. According to AAA, the average annual premium for a new car is over 1,200 bucks. So when it comes to car insurance, it doesn't hurt to shop for quotes every several years just in case a lower rate is now available elsewhere. And here's a caveat. Just don't go for the cheapest. You should consider the company's financial strength and credit worthiness. What's the point of paying the cheapest rate if it turns out the company won't be able to cover you later on or they delay processing your claim in a timely manner? 
But now you tell me, is there a car insurance brand you trust and why? If you have any funny or horror stories with dealing with a car insurance company, please comment below and share. If you like the video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your support.